man, every single day or every other week, it seems like something new comes up on the scene in our art industry that just blows my mind. Take a quick look at this, guys, and let's discuss it. What you're seeing are not games or videos. They're worlds. Each one of these is an interactive environment generated by Genie 3, a new frontier for world models. With Genie 3, you can use natural language to generate a variety of worlds and explore them interactively, all with a single text prompt. Let's see what it's like to spend some time in a world. Genie 3 has real-time interactivity, meaning that the environment reacts to your movements and actions. You're not walking through a pre-built simulation. Everything you see here is being generated live as you explore it. And Genie 3 has world memory. That's why environments like this one stay consistent. World memory even carries over into your actions. For example, when I'm painting on this wall, my actions persist. I can look away and generate other parts of the world. But when I look back, the actions I took are still there. And Genie 3 enables promptable events, so you can add new events into your world on the fly. Something like another person, or transportation, or even something totally unexpected. You can use Genie to explore real world physics and movement, and all kinds of unique environments. You can generate worlds with distinct geographies, historical settings, fictional environments, and even other characters. We're excited to see how Genie 3 can be used for next generation gaming and entertainment. And that's just the beginning. Worlds could help with embodied research, training robotic agents before working in the real world, or simulating dangerous scenarios for disaster preparedness and emergency training. World models can open new pathways for learning agriculture, manufacturing, and more. We're excited to see how Genie 3's world simulation can benefit research around the world. Even as I'm looking at this, I can't help but wonder, is this the end of 3D modeling as we know it, right? Is this the end of 3D artists, texture artists? Is this the end of uh, rigging? animation because if you can do this in real time i'm thinking about companies that are thinking about their bottom line like why would you pay someone to actually create this world right it's it when it comes to economics i'm just thinking now as like just putting on the heart of a business person and i see where this is headed because if game companies can do this there's really no need to invest heavily into art teams where you have like multiple people modeling the environment when you can just simply prompt it and it's a little bit it can be discouraging for sure and kind of frustrating because when we've put so much time and effort in going to school doing online classes practicing and practicing to create 3d environment characters environments craft like honing your craft to texture to light an environment and then an engine like this comes along where none of that is needed. All you need is just to prompt something and something shows up already rigged, already textured, already lit, you know? <laughs> it's a mind blowing. I'm still grappling with the impact of what this is gonna do to our industry. And I, of course, I can't wait to test it, to see how well it works, to see the poly count. I want to see if these worlds can actually be exported into something else. But it seems like this engine just makes it possible for you to generate a, a, an idea into a video game that then can be played. It's interactive. You can do a simulation. If you are thinking about like training people in the military, for example, for, for warfare, you could essentially just prompt an, a war zone and then have them maybe in vr you know with a, a, like vr goggles practice this out like surgeons students you know it's like this is the day i think many of us have been thinking about that this day was coming but you know it was going to come this quick and of course google is well 
place to be able to because it has a wealth of information using it as such engines and or in youtube and you name it because they have the data sets to be able to do this many other companies don't have the robust infrastructure that youtube has or you google has to be able to pull this off but they do so they can essentially just <laughs> understand the world and for it to be able to be remembered you know and to see their image, like how much it's been improving is wild. So guys, I really want to know what you think of uh, VE, like this, this, of course we have had VE03, but now we have Genie, <laughs> you know, Genie 3 model. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I am really trying to understand the applications of this, how I'll use this in film, like t telling my story in filmmaking. Like it's going to boil down to storytelling, I think. It's come to a point where everything can be created by anyone. What's left is you as a storyteller bringing your experience or something that you've imagined into life, be able to tell the system, this is the idea that I have. Because if you have the idea and it's unique, that's going to separate you from anybody else. So guys, <laughs> maybe we need to take more walks in the woods. Maybe we need to leave the world and our, our just get away from our desks and just explore the world so that we can actually get infused with some new ideas. Because if someone can do this, the system can actually remember the entire world, then you really don't need to physically create something. The system can create all of that. So it's a matter of uh, describing it you know so i don't know of course i'm looking forward to when this comes uh, available to the public so we can actually tr uh, just use it um i i uh, i have a lot of other thoughts <laughs> that i really can't grasp just yet even just the thoughts themselves like what is the impact of me as an artist what is this going to do to a career as an artist you know should I think about doing other things or should I just focus on storytelling? And that's what I think you should ask yourself as well. Do you want to be a storyteller? Because if you do, then this tool becomes helpful. If you no longer want to be a storyteller and all you ever wanted was just to create models or 3D models or to texture things or rig things, then you may start reconsidering a career path because this system seems to be able to do all of that so i am hoping guys that you don't give up being creative even in the face of this i think more than anything it's important for us to continue thinking about being storytellers because when you got into this industry what you really wanted to do was to be able to create worlds right to be able to take those worlds and then use them to tell a story the story has always been the driving factor behind us as artists. You draw something because you have a, an idea of a story in your mind. These systems, Gini 3 and whatever, Gini 4, whatever that's coming up, are going to be able to do all of that in an instant, in real time, to be able to control this. Whichever direction you go, you're able to go. To, it's like it remembers everything. It's like you literally being out in the world walking and every time where you turn, you can go back and remember, oh, that tree was right there, right? And it stays there. So I know this is going to be, it's going to change our industry. It's going to impact jobs for sure. There's no doubt about it. But I think my encouragement to you is think about becoming a storyteller. Think about creating a story that's convincing, that's unique to you. Think about how you can then harness the technology that's before us. Because there was a time when people used to use typewriters to type on paper, on, on a typewriter, and then be able to print that. But those things are being fa got phased out at some point. Now we're using keyboards and we're using like voice commands, we're using virtual reality. So the world is not going to stay the same. The world is going to change, right? And while the world is changing, do your best to be a storyteller because I think that's what it's going back to. I remember when we were growing up in Uganda, the thing that I remember the most that impacted me is sitting down with my grandmother. She was telling me stories, but she would tell the same story sometimes different ways to share a moral you know, in our lives so that you could be better kids, for example. 
But she found a way to do that without computers, without a radio, without a TV for all of those years. I think that's what it's going to come back to is that we need to try to develop becoming storytellers and then building an audience. I encourage you guys to build your audiences because if you have an audience and you have tools that can then generate your ideas into this, it makes a huge difference. So if you have inside a YouTube channel or maybe like a Facebook page that you you start creating a community, please consider doing that. Maybe in TikTok or TikTok is, I hope it doesn't get burnt. (laughs) But even on Instagram, you know, so as I, I know I am always encouraging you to dare to dream big, but more than anything, dare to dream big as a storyteller because now the system is here that can actually create the world. It's coming. It's not yet. I, it's not available to us just yet. But I'm always praying for you guys as creators, as artists, as storytellers. May we continue to harness these technologies to tell our stories, to bring our stories to life. In this case, video games, cinematics, movies. Stay safe. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.